This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday. My guest today is Jane Forrest Redfern of the Dairy Barn. Thanks for coming over and I know you're going to be telling us, Jane, about interesting and exciting new things at the Dairy Barn. Yes, thanks for having me, Lois. It's um, a pleasure to come today and share with all of your watchers um, and admirers uh, all of the work that we're doing and we're planning on doing. So uh -huh. thank you for having us <laughs> and me. And of course you always have uh, something interesting on display mm -hmm. there at the Dairy Barn. Um, what is the current exhibit? Well, our current exhibit um, was curated by Nancy Crow, one of the founders of Quilt National. Um, and she identified 11 master quilters mm -hmm. um, that presented three large, very large mm -hmm. uh, contemporary quilts. And uh, seven of them are from uh, the United States, from Washington to, to uh, just right up the road. Uh, Nancy has her own quilts in. And then we have a few Canadians, and um, uh, Haida Stoll Weber, she's from Frankfurt, Germany. Mm. And they're all master quilters, and um, they have their own style and their own mastery. Um, and the whole idea of mastery was to show large, big, bold designs and to show the incredible mastery that goes into modern day quilting. Right, well the, the modern quilts, I, when I uh, toured through there a week or so ago, I was noticing that there, each one had uh, several quilts. Right, each uh, artist was asked uh, several years, two years ago, to put together um, three n large quilts. They were also asked um, to uh, present studio work, um, work that led to those pieces. Mm -hmm. So some artists, like Bonnie Buckham, um, she actually does paintings that are inspired by natural landscapes. Mm -hmm. And then what she'll do is then do a quilt based on that painting. Mm -hmm. um, other artists do paper collages. Mm -hmm. um, some just sketch it out. And so their kind of pre-quilt um, imagery is shown along with the larger pieces. So it's nice to be able to see Bonnie's um, beautiful sea ice painting mm -hmm. and then see the finished quilt on the wall, which looks very similar to uh -huh. it. But uh, it's made up of many pieced, um, different colored pieces of fabric and then intricately um, quilted. Yes. Yes. You mentioned uh, Nancy Crow uh -huh. uh, and that she was the inspiration and sort of got these things together, really, didn't she, for you, or made the contacts with the, uh, with the quilters? Recently. Yeah, she's, um, she's internationally known and has really built the modern quilt movement. Um, and she knows these artists, um, and she's known many of these artists for over 20 years. Yes. And so she wanted to not only feature artists that have been doing and evolving their, their art form over the years, but also get a few of the emerging artists, mm -hmm. but that were still masters um, in their own right. Yes. Well, I can remember when Nancy Crow lived here in Athens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she lived here for um, three, three or four years, I think. Yeah. I actually knew her husband better because he was in, uh, involved in some sort of environmental um, concerns that mm -hmm. I was working on at the time in the 70s. Uh -huh. But you mentioned that Nancy was among the people who founded Quilt National. Right. And she was also a member of Save the Barn Committee that mm -hmm. saved the dairy barn back in 78. And the challenge was, you know, when the state granted the dairy barn to the Save the Barn Committee, they had to come up with an exhibit within a year. Mm. And so th 
two women in addition to Nancy came up with the idea of Quilt National mm -hmm. to do a juried international exhibition of the modern quilt. Mm -hmm. And um, that concept um, of Quilt National, from the very get-go, it was Quilt International, really, but we've mm -hmm. always stuck with the Quilt National name. And then secondly, um, you know, it's evolved over the years and been very successful. And um, next year, mm -hmm. we will celebrate the 20th biennial mm -hmm. of Quilt National. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited that that tradition of, of showing the, the latest contemporary quilts um, to the world. Um, one of our shows uh, is coming back from Kansas, mm -hmm. you know, part of Quilt National. Went to Kansas and has been up for a month. Um, and it, next weekend, two of the collections from Quilt National 15 will be up in Summit County mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the um, quilt show um, put on by the Summit Historical Society. Um, and then next year, it will travel all around Ohio and then uh, to France later on. To uh, France. In 17. In well, 17. Yeah. yeah. Well, another very interesting idea that I know that uh, you helped spark was this uh, Athens around the United States idea. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. Well, Athens Voices, um, we had had a, a, an exhibit called Athens Voices, and it was to inspire local artists, Athens, Ohio artists, uh, anyone that lived within 30 miles of Athens. Mm -hmm. um, to submit their work uh, to the Dairy Barn and it would show and it would be one of our local exhibits which are very, very popular. And, and those are many different things. These right, are not it's a quilts. Mixed, no, it's mixed media. We have yeah. ceramics, paintings, prints, photography, um, installations which are really fun, uh, movies, videos. Um, and so we, um, several years back, we were trying to figure out, you know, how could we evolve this to kind of attract more artists mm -hmm. and celebrate not only the local Athens artists, but Athens artists all over the country. Because Athens is a very popular Absolutely. name. Absolutely. <laughs> Just, you know, like Springfield, you know. Um, so we did our research and we found that there are 24 different Athens communities in the wow. United States. Uh -huh. um, two are right here in Ohio, uh, ours of course, and then there's New Athens over by Zanesville. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did was we opened um, Athens Voices to Athens Voices USA and any artist that lives within 30 miles of any Athens community mm -hmm. um, can submit work um, to Athens Voices and that call for entries is right now and the deadline's uh -huh. in November. In November. Right. So we really urge um, uh, local artists to go to the website dairybarn.org and look at the rules and submit their work. Um, we've been very successful. Um, we only had three different Athens the first time we did it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it takes a, a bit of time to catch on. Yes. And then the second time we had nine different Athens mm -hmm. represented. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping that we can expand that. Um, there are 24 current. As you say. Right. Yeah. So we've got a lot of growth there. But the beauty of it is that um, for the last two Athens Voices USAs, we actually loaded the art up, the whole entire show, and we drove it to Concord University, which is in Athens, West Virginia. Ah, uh, yes. And it shows at the Butcher Gallery, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, stays there for a bit, and then we load it up and take it down to Athens, Alabama mm -hmm. um, at the... Um, Alabama Center for the Arts, which is mm -hmm. a beautiful facility if uh, anyone's ever down there. And what it does is it shows those communities that mix media, contemporary work, and our artists become exposed to other artists from throughout the United States, but also their communities get to see our artists. Yes. And that's one of the things that the Dairy Barn has always tried to do is, is to lift up and celebrate the incredible artists that we have here in our region. Right. And this this exposure, I think, especially since it tours, um, 
it's it's kind of a fun project and it adds value to the whole entire exhibit when somebody says well my exhibit not only was in Athens Ohio but it traveled to Athens West Virginia and Athens Alabama yes. we are trying to get uh, Athens Georgia lined up for this particular coming show so we've got to find a venue first so. well you know uh, Jane I have been pressing people in Athens New York <laughs> Right. To do something. Oh, good. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, the thing is, you see, I have an interest in genealogy. Uh -huh. And my great-great-grandmother came from uh, Catskill, sure. which is 10 miles from Athens, New York. Perfect. You know? So I said to myself, well, maybe I could encourage people. But, of course, all of those folks moved away long ago, so it's not like I have Relatives someone there, there right, who right. could go down and press <laughs> but um, they're well known in that area for the um, Hudson River School absolutely and so they have a very lively um, art although it's this is 19th century art right uh, uh, Thomas Moran I think it was who had um, a headquarters in Catskill okay. in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So I'm always getting some information about the latest thing that they are doing for him in Catskill. Oh, that's great. Athens, New York is really quite a small place. So. Right. <laughs> well, if there's any indication, Athens, Ohio is the second largest community of all the Athens. Is so, that yeah, right? it's Athens, uh, Georgia, and um, and then there's uh, Athens, Ohio, and then uh -huh. the other ones are townships or villages or, you know, small communities. Small um, communities. There is an Athens uh, township near Los Angeles, uh -huh. but uh -huh. um, it's it's kind of a township of, of you know, far, pretty far out of Los Angeles. But um, we've contacted the art centers uh, in those those regional areas and the local um, public radio stations to do public service announcements. Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll communicate with the artists that have participated in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for your outreach. And <laughs> yes. um, we have people in high places, you know, that, <laughs> that are rooting for us. So thank you so much. Yeah, well, it's, it's such an intriguing idea, really. And for that matter, I mean, another uh, one that is done by the Dairy Barn, I think every year, is a regional one with uh, artists from all the uh, states that bound Ohio. Yeah, that's uh, OH plus five, and we do, uh, we just closed it earlier this year. Um, and that is for artists that are um, from the surrounding five states. Right, so it's Michigan, Indiana, so West Virginia, Pennsylvania. I'm leaving someone out. Kentucky, <laughs> right? Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes. O oh, OH yes, plus five. Of course. Right. And so what we try to do is um, mix up the jurors for these exhibits, um, and we try to get jurors from different states, so that draws different artists to the show. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, we don't want to select artists always from Athens. You know, we want to get a mix of, of people. Yes. So um, that's always fun. And so the entries come in to uh, an online site, and the jurors sit at night in their pajamas if they'd like. And to be able to look at all of the art, um, they rank it one to five. And then as the uh, process goes forward, the jurors come to the dairy barn mm -hmm. and then they can start talking about the art together because it's silent until at some point we decide yes you can talk and they then decide what final pieces get in the show. Mm. The jurors do not know the names or locations of any of the artists so mm -hmm. it's not like um, they'll say oh I want everybody from West Virginia in the show if mm -hmm. there's a West Virginia um, artist or juror. Um, and then they select um, based on the art and mm -hmm. the photographs. Um, a lot of people don't know what a juried show is, and so I thought I would clarify it for 
Yes, well, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, a friend of mine, the late Clifford McCarthy, was um, active with the dairy barn, and that would have been before your time because uh -huh. he passed away some time ago. Uh -huh. But um, I know the, the family is still involved, and he had been uh, with the art department here at Ohio University. Oh, right. Right. So, uh, but over the years, he had worked as a juror from time to time at mm -hmm. the dairy barn. Yeah. Well, we try to build as many relationships with OU and other regional universities and colleges. Um, we have really good working relationships, and, you know, you can always build upon them. And, you know, with our upcoming expansion, we're really hoping that those bridges um, get built even more. Yes. Um, you know, there's 20 to 25,000 students right across the river and you know that river must be really wide and deep because <laughs> we don't see as many students at the dairy barn that we'd like but certainly it would be a population we would want to build relationships with yes. and of course the university as well and um, we're so blessed to have the Kennedy right up the hill yes. as well and with their renovations um, you know our whole area across the river from the university is really going to be a hot spot in the community. Yes. So. Well, the Kennedy is at the ridges, and um, I've often uh, sat, you know, at the Kennedy because of the the time frame. I think it's like a Wednesday or a Thursday. Right, a maritime, right? And. Um, Tuesday, is it Tuesday that the Dairy Barn has someone from the Ameritai? Yeah, it's Tuesdays um, for the Dairy Barn, and I think Wednesdays are for the Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. because Tuesday is a time when I often come here ah. to Channel 9. Oh, and okay. <laughs> so uh, it, it, does, it wouldn't fit in, you know, with my schedule. Right, right. But um, I know the Ameritai are very active helping. And there's this connection between Kennedy and the Dairy Barn because although we say the Dairy Barn, uh, the Dairy Barn was a real Dairy Barn and I think it very interesting that you have uh, for sale in your gift shop, you have some historic pictures mm -hmm. which show the Dairy Barn when it really was a Dairy Barn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there were three three barns there that, at one well, time. It just, it just depends on who you talk to. Some people say, you know, there were three large barns, there were 17 buildings, um, two houses. It just depends on what the point of time it was. Right. Um, and all, you know, and as, as they grew, some buildings were torn down. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what kind of time frame you're talking about. But I think at one time, there were upwards of 17,000, uh, 17 um, different buildings. Right, in that area. That served that. So it might be a calf barn that's just very uh -huh. small or uh -huh. whatever. But um, well, originally, the back in the 1912, uh -huh, the right. plan was to build three, that main barn, and then and then they grew from there. Right. Well, the, the postcard that I... I found so interesting and you know I bought one that day and I thought I'll take this when we talk about the dairy barn and of course now I can't find the dog oh, postcard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but well, uh, sure. I don't think it we have any shows three pictures. large barns. Yeah. So the it was three in large, yeah. Like 1919 yeah. or I don't something think, like that. I don't think they can get this yeah, picture uh, but probably maybe we not can, in there. Yeah. Yeah. Can you scoot in? No. No. And, and well, you have to come to the Dairy Barns Gallery Shop and you can see the historic photos of it. Right, yes. right. And plus you have for sale the Quilt National books. Yeah, we have quite a few catalogs. We have Quilt National um, 11, 13, 15. Um, we also have um, Quilt Revolution, which was an exhibit for our 100th birthday, the Dairy Barn. It was a special exhibit. 2013. Which, uh, 2014. 2014. Um, okay. was our 100th birthday of the Dairy Barn. And we did a special show called Quilt Revolution, which uh, featured uh, quilts by jurors, quilt national jurors. Oh, uh -huh. And it showed a picture of uh, quilt, their quilts from 1979 
the year that they juried, and then a 2014 or 13 quilt, something most recent. Mm -hmm. And that catalog has been very, very popular because it shows the development of the art form mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. the last 30 eight years. Yes. So that's really exciting. Um, and then we have this beautiful mastery catalog, which features um, all of the... This the is the current display? Right, our current, um, our current exhibit. And it shows lovely photographs of each of the quilts and talks about the statements inside by each of the artists are really interesting because what, what they focused on was what sustaining momentum and mastery means to them. Mm -hmm. And um, they talk a, a lot about their art form and how they sustain their, their work, um, how they keep creating, what their creative process is. Um, a few of them talked about how physical um, they had to get w with such large quilts. Oh, yes. Um, and uh, I think Nancy Crow mentions uh, in her piece how physical she had to get climbing up and down ladders because these quilts are nine, almost nine feet tall. Yeah, the, uh, um, hers seemed to be the largest one yeah, there. Yeah, she, she was, uh, <laughs> I mean, she was one, going for one big. of three. <laughs> right, right. So she was going for the champion ones. But what we're really proud of is um, over a month and a half ago, we released uh, videos mm -hmm. of all of the artists in mastery. Um, so people can go to our YouTube video, uh, video channel, Dairy Barn Art Center, and put in mastery. And all qu 12 quilters have a three, four minute video mm -hmm. talking about their quilts and their art form. Um, we also have um, over 60 videos from our Quilt National 15 artists, mm -hmm. um, and they they received over 25,000 hits on YouTube. My goodness! Um, so people are anxious, kind of like when you go to the farmers market, you want to meet the farmer, right? Yes. <laughs> so with this, it we what we found with these videos on YouTube is that people want to hear from the artists. They want to meet them. They want to have, you know, learn about their craft and, mm -hmm. and how they hand dye their fabric and, and uh, what helps them create these um, wonderful pieces of work. Yes, well, and uh, it, it's very true. I, I'm familiar with quilting, the old-fashioned quilts, you know, sure. that uh, my grandmother made and uh -huh. my, my mother-in-law and sure. so on. And uh, it really is... I mean, if you're, you, you have to be working a bit at a time, a bit at a time, especially with hand quilting. And if you have something that's, you know, like nine feet, imagine. But I imagine Nancy Crow has some kind of a, a large frame or something that uh, she can use to do the, to help her with the quilting. Well, actually, she has, and which is allowable under quilt, national and um, other exhibits is that you can have someone that dyes the fabric, sews it, designs the quilt, mm -hmm. and then you will have, in some cases, a quilter. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a, a one-two punch. You have two artists. I um, see. Mm -hmm. And Nancy Crow, for instance, has a very talented quilter. Now, it's not like the quilter decides where the, the quilting's going to be. Mm -hmm. Nancy intricately tells her where she wants the quilting mm -hmm. and in what designs. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, work with quilters. Some people do all of it, mm -hmm. hand dye the fabric, design, and quilt it. So it just depends on the artist. Um, some people want to, you know, just like farmers, some farmers want to pick tomatoes and some farmers want to, you know, grow corn. Sure. Um, artists are the same way. They some like to hand dye the fabric and design. They don't want a quilt, you know, so they'll bring a quilter on. But it's under their design and it's their quilt. You know. Right, so and there they're are. They're all artists in one form or another. Right, and there are many possible concepts. I, I was thinking, again, this is a traditional quilt, but when my husband and I were married in 1954, which is a pretty long time ago, over 60 years. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty incredible. But uh, the wedding present that my mother-in-law 
gave, gave me was the um, one that she had, the quilt that she had made after my husband was born in 1930. Wow. And she had sent out squares, you know, all of the same fabric uh -huh. to quilters all over the country. So she had 48 squares, you know, and each one had a, a name of a, ch of a child born in 1930, um, done, you know. And I guess that she must have done 48 squares with his name on it and sent them, because it was a oh, trading kind of thing that was done. that's interesting. Really, you know, I, I, I imagine there must be a number of of those um, quilts out there with his name on it. Huh. His name doesn't appear on, the, on this because she has another New York, he was born in New York State. Right. She had another New York State quilter send her uh, child's name, you know. So. <laughs> Interesting, that's, that's incredible. So people for a long time have been thinking of different uh, concepts that they can use in terms of quilts. But as you point out, um, the dairy barn is, is larger in concept in that you have other exhibits other than the famous Quilt National. Right, absolutely. Uh, you know, we have Athens Voices, which is a, the, we talked about earlier, uh, a mixed media exhibit. Mm -hmm. So is OH Plus Five, the Ohio Border Exhibition. Um, those are both a call for art. We don't say call for quilts. Now, some people do submit quilts if mm -hmm. they live in the particular area. I, I had a woman um, that entered uh, Quilt National that lives within um, 30 miles of Athens, Virginia. Ah. And so she's going to be submitting the, the quilt that didn't get into Quilt National uh -huh. into that show <laughs> because she wants m more exposure. Sure. And so, and she loves the dairy barn. So that was nice. Um, we also have um, contemporary ceramics. Mm -hmm. Next fall, um, Brad Schweger, um, chair of the ceramics department at Ohio University, mm -hmm. uh, one of the best programs in the country, has agreed again to um, curate a in a national contemporary ceramic show. Mm -hmm. So next mm -hmm. fall, again, we will um, have ceramics from all over the country. And you'll have small pieces, usable pieces, sculptural pieces. Mm -hmm. And um, he came in and talked with me this week. Um, and he's really excited about how the show's coming. Great. And that's a curated show. So uh -huh. he's selecting the artists that are in, similar to, to Mastery. Um, then coming up, we are planning a wood show for mm -hmm. um, 2018, and then an international photo uh, photography um, ah. exhibit uh -huh. for the fall of 18 called the Art of Photography Wide Open. Right. Wide Open, the Art of Photography. And so we have a lot of things coming up. Um, we usually use the, the fall and the off Quilt National Years for new and emerging shows. Mm -hmm. But then we always have the traditional Athens show, the regional show, and then Quilt National. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we incorporate different shows. Mm -hmm. um, we have an exhibits committee that that keeps their thumb on the, the current exhibits that are happening in mm -hmm. the country and what's emerging. And, and they decide a, a schedule three years in advance. So we're w well into 19 at this point. So oh, really? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, they're they work hard. Yeah. yeah. These are all volunteers. It's great. <laughs> they have to think down the time right. frame there. Well, you need you need a lot of lead time for these kind yeah. of exhibits because it takes a long time uh, to make uh, some art forms. It takes a long time to make art. So right. you want to make sure that you're getting the most contemporary work that's out there. And, of course, Quilt National itself is biennial, right. so that it's every other year. Right. And this was one of the years that was not Quilt National. Right. And Masary basically came from, you know, relationship building with, 
with Nancy Crow again, trying to identify, you know, leading up to the 20th biennial mm -hmm. of Quilt National, I said to her, you know, Quilt National was such a great idea. If you had the opportunity to do, um, you know, another exhibit with that brilliant mind of yours, what would it be? And so her idea was mastery. Was and that mastery. was three, three right. years ago that she had agreed to do the show so which is the one as we were pointing right. out that that's is hanging right now yeah. right now yeah. so if anyone wants to go to see it what type of hours do you have at the dairy um, barn we basically are just closed on monday uh -huh. um and then every other day we're open 12 to 5. 12 to 5. and then thursdays we're open 12 to 8. 12 to 8. and between 5 and 8 on thursday nights it's free Okay, so people who maybe like students or somebody, you know, who don't really um, have that much in their pockets. <laughs> or you want to go for dinner and then you want to stop by and see sure. the quilts after dinner with your, with your uh, partner or significant Whatever. other or a friend. Yeah. Uh, it gives, it's the evening hours that we're, right, that we're the, able to do. on yeah. Thursday. We also are a Blue Star Museum, although we're not a museum, we're an art center. Mm -hmm. And that means that any military, uh, immediate military families, mm -hmm. um, anyone serving in the military or a veteran, if they have their ID, we let them in for free. Oh, that well, is that's something nice. we um, adopted this year. Mm -hmm. um, because of the service that they have given to their country, we feel like that's something we can give back. Yes. And, um, you know, so that's kind of a new thing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I think we ought to talk, well, before we talk about the expansion of the dairy barn, I did want to emphasize the connection between Kennedy and the dairy barn. Mm -hmm. In that Kennedy is at the ridges, but it is the former uh, asylum that was started in the um, 1870s. And um, that was still, when we came to Athens in 1964, it was still a mental health institution that right. was active. Right. Um, but then after it closed, after there was more of an emphasis on uh, local local mental health services as opposed to institutional ones. Right, community, um, yeah. Then the, the Ridges area was just there for a while, you know, and uh, sort of vacant. Right. But the uh, state of Ohio uh, deeded it over to the Ridges, it was called the Ridges after they had a, <laughs> A local contest for the naming. Oh, know. really? Yeah. Gee, I, I know. I, I always learn something when I'm on your show, Lois. I always learn something. Well, uh, they called it the Ridges, and then you know Kennedy for not for JFK, right. but for uh, someone who is, has been a, who was a tremendous patron of Ohio University. He and his wife were mm -hmm. both Edwin Kennedy. Right were both um, OU graduates, and he became quite a well-to-do lawyer, I believe, with these connections in the Southwest. And so they have these marvelous uh, rugs and um, other, again, um, fabric, mm -hmm. fabric Fiber, uh, yeah. collection from the Southwest. They have something like 600 Navajo ro rugs. Wow you know, or, or things that are yeah. fabric yeah. art. Right. And um, then the dairy barn was part of that asylum grounds. Right. right. And the, the dairy barn was a working barn. And as you point out, there were 17 total. At one time, yeah. In, and right. at one time in that area, plus, uh, there's that that large brick house that that is still there. Yes. That is, I'm not sure there's some group in there, but that's very close to the dairy barn itself. Right. That's the 317 board. Yeah. 317. Yeah, 317. Board. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, and and in the old days, the patients 
at the asylum worked in the dairies. Right. And in a way it was it was kind of a pity that eventually, I think maybe in the 1970s or maybe even a little earlier, uh, it was decided judicially that they could, that the patients could not be assigned or whatever, you know, uh, to do work without right. uh, compensation. Yes, that's right. And so that meant sort of the end of the of the uh, dairy barns being used with patient um, worked. Right. Which was, you know, you think, well, that's sort of a kind of slavery. On the other hand, <laughs> well, I they think would the just philosophy be sitting. Was, yeah, the, right. The people would just be sitting around. Right. In, in the buildings, maybe, and right. so on. Well, I think the anyway. philosophy was that um, people would get better quicker if they had meaningful work and fresh air. Right. And um, given, you know, a mission to do right. that was beyond themselves. Yes. And so I think that that was the philosophy. So it was, it was not only the deinstitutionalization, mm -hmm. which closed this um, mental health center, the hospital, but also the rule change, the law change you said, that, that you couldn't work people without paying them. Right. Um, and that basically closed um, the dairy barn, you know, and many of the other operations mm -hmm. at the um, hospital at the time. So, um, but, you know, we turn um, water into wine, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, in that, you know, we turn this this barn with manure and concrete and um, we've been able to transform it over the last 38 years right? Um, to one of the finest uh, art centers in, in all of Ohio mm -hmm. um, as well as it's internationally known. Um, yes. So and you know features artists from all over the world so yes. we're we're very pleased to to have that very rich history and tradition and um, we're at a point now where you know as we approach and we're beginning our second century of the dairy barn mm -hmm. that's when we decided that how can we serve the community better how can we um, be able to make a an art center and expand it so that we can better serve artists the community to teach and and sell and to exhibit art and so that's what took the board and staff and the, the community into the building for a second century yes. project and that is um, basically we're working to raise 1.5 million dollars um, we're at 1.1 ish right now mm -hmm. um, we've received grants and major donations from the Athens Foundation, the Athens Rotary Foundation, mm -hmm. um, the Ch Charles G. F um, Oblenis Foundation. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, Oblenis and Ohio Health have contributed. Um, you know, and many large donors, Hawking Valley Bank um, uh, and People's Bank have mm -hmm. contributed, um, and many businesses as well. And so we're excited that we're able to move forward to our second century with a plan that's really going to be able to expand and make the organization as well as the dairy barn more sustainable environmentally, mm -hmm. economically, and serving more in the community. Yes, but uh, the expansion is not going to change really what you see when you first come up the little road to the dairy barn. Is I have it? had uh, many, many uh, founding members of the board. Uh -huh. um, they get a mailing and they call immediately and go, what are you going to do to the front of the dairy barn? Uh -huh. And none of the building of the dairy barn um, uh, is going to be touched. Actually, mm -hmm. um, what we've pretty much done is that the dairy barn itself is completely restored. Um, mm -hmm. There were, there was one project that we needed to do, and that was to uh, restore and preserve the ends of the barn. Mm -hmm. Birds were getting into the the hay loft doors, oh, uh -huh. and they were starting to eat away at that beautiful arch in the ends of 
the gable oh, ends of the barn. Uh -huh. And so we did that last year. Mm -hmm. And so the the dairy barn itself will be preserved. The, mm -hmm. No changes to the actual barn will be made. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is we're adding on the back of the barn. On the back. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So when you go around the, the corner, that will be changed. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, I think uh, we've got up on the screen basically what the back of the barn is going to look like. And oh, I see. Um, it will also include, in addition to the changes here, um, we will be having a brand new um, uh, brick parking lot. We've taken up all of the bricks. Mm -hmm. um, Mason Chambers and his staff did a great job taking the bricks up. And we're preserving those, and those will be relayed. And we'll also have pavers so the mm -hmm. water can go through. Mm -hmm. um, we're, in addition, we'll also do a nature trail um, uh -huh. up through the 32 acres that we own, which we've never tapped into before. So 32 acres yes, there. Yes, yes, that we, we own. Um, people go up there, but there's only what really one main trail up to mm -hmm. the top, up to the ridge. But... We're excited about that. But getting back to the, the building uh, plan, if you want to show that, there we go. Um, so basically what when you come around uh, the corner at the dairy barn, you're actually going to see um, a main entrance with a, a silo top. Mm -hmm. um, the main um, gallery um, lobby area will be expanded significantly. Oh, I see. Um, the elevator and the beautiful stylish rest restrooms will stay, but when you enter there will be this beautiful glass lobby where the light will be able to shine through beautifully. Um, on the right hand side there you'll see uh, quite a large two-story barn. And that barn was taken out of Meigs County. Um, it was built in 1883. Mm -hmm. And Barney Gruser um, took, uh, found this barn for, for us um, and took it down and is preserving it. And will oh. be re-erecting it. Um, the owner of that barn actually used to work at the dairy barn. My goodness. And so he gifted it to us mm -hmm. as uh, a contribution towards our efforts. So it was a really great gift. On, in that barn, when you, it's a timber framed barn. When you enter the lobby on the right hand side, we're going to be expanding our gallery shop, which mm -hmm. is now mm -hmm. at the very end of the barn and very right. small. To the right there will be a large gallery shop, which mm -hmm. will be able to feature more artists and more local art. Mm -hmm. We have 60 artists now, and our goal is to get it up to maybe 100. Uh -huh. um, and um, then on the left-hand side, um, you'll have the, um, the community room. Mm -hmm. And the Athens Foundation has sponsored that. It will be 12-foot uh, ceilings in there, mm -hmm. and um, you'll be able to go in there and have, for instance, like Athens friends and neighbors were at the dairy barn. Mm -hmm. If they want to have their meeting once a month there, that will be a good meeting space. We'll mm -hmm. also have workshops and classes for that. Um, right now, most of those things are in the second floor of right. the uh, current dairy barn. Yeah, right. and um, that loft space has been renovated, and we have brand new wood floors in that space. Upstairs. Yes. Yeah, so it's gonna it's it's absolutely beautiful, and it's going to be great for events and wedding receptions, meetings, and um, so that is part of the kind of overall re renovations mm -hmm. of the barn. Um, uh, behind the, the gallery shop will be the uh, catering kitchen. We do a lot of events. Last night um, we had the Ohio Community Development Association. Mm -hmm. People from mm -hmm. all over the state of Ohio came to the dairy barn for a reception in the gallery. And, um, you know, Salams was catering mm -hmm. and they were back in a corner in the dairy <laughs> barn. And, and so with this catering kitchen, our, our wedding receptions, our caterers will actually have a place to be able to right. wash dishes, prepare food, to 
to get it ready for the events. And so that's going to be a wonderful addition. All they want is water, basically. Uh -huh. um, but we'll be able to put everything in that catering kitchen. I guess you'll have to run a water pipe to the uh, new old barn part where oh, the... Oh, uh... yeah. We'll talk about, <laughs> we can talk about water all day. But, yeah, we'll definitely uh, need some more water on Dairy Lane. Uh -huh. um, the uh, second floor of the gallery shop, because it's a two-story barn, will be mm -hmm. a fiber arts studio. And that's a kind of a whole new program that we're embarking in. Mm -hmm. um, to add uh, studio um, spaces in the dairy barn. Mm -hmm. And so right now we've established the, um, the ceramic studio. Um, we're establishing a digital studio. And we'll have the fiber arts studio. And those three studios will be open to dairy barn members and members of the community. And they can come for classes or workshops, or if they're just a budding artist and need studio space, they can come mm -hmm. do their craft mm -hmm. um, and basically help with their training and um, economic development and sustainability of mm -hmm. artists in the community. Because many of, many times, someone will graduate from OU or Hawking College from the ceramics program, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, they had all of the tools there at the university. Yes. They graduate, and then they don't have a wheel. They don't have the tools. They mm -hmm. don't have a kiln. But they could make a living as a ceramicist, mm -hmm. you know? And then they could sell the work in the gallery shop. So all of these studios, whether it's the fiber arts, will have, you know, uh, sewing machines, um, long arm mm -hmm. quilting mm -hmm. machines, other, you know, fiber arts uh, equipment. Um, digital studio, we'll have printers, we'll have computers, mm -hmm. we'll have a place where artists and individuals can take pictures of their art um, so that they can submit to exhibits or sell online or whatever. So all of these studios are to give tools to artists, mm -hmm. but also for our community to learn the arts of our region, you mm -hmm. know. Ceramics, big, huge, uh, you know, we have clay deposits here. Yes. And it was a natural art form for yes. our region. Fiber arts, you know, rich history in fiber arts, um, whether it's weavings or, or tapestries or quilts. Mm -hmm. um, and then digital, it's emerging. There's all kinds of, you know, we can't live our lives without digital. Right. So that's going to give people an opportunity to work out and... Um, be able to use the equipment and that's the studio program is being supported by the Appalachian Regional Commission, the Governor's mm. Office on Appalachia, the Ohio Arts Council, the National Endowment for the Arts mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're seeking additional funding for the studio so all of the studios are open for naming so oh. if there's anybody <laughs> that wants to name one of the studios we're we're right there for you. Um, Bring in $500,000. There we go, and we'll <laughs> name it after you. Um, so, you know, the whole Second Century project is basically to make the organization more sustainable, mm -hmm. but also to assist local artists and community members and our members um, the ability to make art and create art and sell art and exhibit art. And in addition to the making art, and expanding the gallery shop to sell more, we'll also be adding additional gallery spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so the old gallery shop at the end of the barn will become a new gallery. Mm -hmm. So we'll have openings. A little smaller place. Yeah, so it'll be a little bit more intimate. It may be a local school exhibit. It may be a featured artist. Uh, mm -hmm. It might be a resident artist, a visiting artist. Um, so all of these things we're kind of trying to figure out right now. Oh, and yes. We're very inspired by people's ideas and thoughts. And so right now we're kind of laying all the groundwork for all of that. But also, we're, you know, we've got 80% of the, the money we need, but we're still, still, that 20% is always the most difficult part to raise. Mm, so yes. we need everybody to kind of reach in their pockets and support us in any way mm -hmm. they can. And mm -hmm. that means volunteers too. 
um, you know, that $5 contribution towards the get, get capital campaign is, is always welcome. In addition to, as you said, a half a million, that's welcome too. Um, it's all of us that save the barn here mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. community, and it's all of us that are going to move it forward. Yes, it's, uh, it's very exciting. And I think of um, Aura Anderson, whom I knew pretty well, yeah. mostly through Audubon Society uh -huh. back in the 1990s. Um, but his, his wife in particular, who was an artist herself, Beautiful, yeah. was um, among the people, you know, like Nancy Crow, who really had the idea for the dairy barn becoming uh, an art exhibit area. Right. And um, I remember her artwork, Harriet Anderson, had a lot of um, skeleton leaves in it. Oh, yeah, those were her um, nature collages. Uh -huh. And we are, um, you know, blessed to have three of those pieces from that collection. Mm -hmm. um, she always incorporated nature into a lot of her artwork, whether it was tapestries. Uh, if you go to the Methodist Church on College Avenue, mm -hmm. she did many of the banners that hang in the church during oh, really? different seasons. Well, you see, here's something. With, along I, with the other women. Here's something that I learned from you, There Jane. we go. Well, <laughs> and um, she died too early. She died rather young. And, yes. And or only was five years after saving the barn. Yeah, her 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 widower carried on to help a lot with the dairy barn and, and he was a, he was an artist himself because he carved birds right and we um, celebrate his birds every year with a raffle um, the family um, Susie Scott and Jan Leonard um, they uh, gave the dairy barn 10 or Anderson bird carvings so wonderful and every uh, fall season, we'll be kicking it off uh, later, um, well, in November, where we'll raffle off for $5 a ticket to win uh, an Ora Anderson bird carving. Wonderful. Half the money goes to the Ora Anderson Conservation Fund, and half of the money goes to the dairy barn. Mm -hmm. So we're very pleased to be able to, um, you know, give everyone in the community an opportunity to right. have one of us um, coveted birds. Uh -huh. um, some people have a lot of them, but, uh -huh. <laughs> but there are a lot out there, and um, they're, they're just incredible pieces of work. Yes. Well, I remember in particular the exhibit that uh, he had with, um, oh, now I'm forgetting her name. She's been gone a long time, too, but she was the uh, artist and naturalist who, oh, June Carver Roberts. June Carver Roberts, who uh, wrote Born in the Spring yes. with all the beautiful spring flowers from... Right, I'm surprised you didn't bring it today. You brought it last time. Uh, I yeah. yeah, that was the first book my husband ever gave to me as oh, a gift. Oh, really? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And she also work. did one on winter plants. Uh-huh. You know, I have never seen that. Season of Promise, it's called. Huh. And it doesn't have so many... Uh, there aren't many colored things in it because actually I think it's it has reds some reds in it but it's mostly after all in the winter time you don't have as many right. colors yeah. in nature naturally as you do in the spring and so on right but um, that was a colorful. wonderful yeah. exhibit uh, Ora Anderson and yeah, June, Car sorry, June Carver Roberts that would have been an incredible one yeah yeah well it's uh, it's been marvelous, the things that these far-sighted people like Nancy Crow and uh, the Andersons um, were responsible for getting underway originally. Right. Yeah. And now here along you come, and uh, you've been leading the effort and are leading the effort now to expand the dairy barn in the ways that you've described, and, mm -hmm. and we've seen the the actual plans yeah. uh, for the dairy barn. I think we have a couple other slides. The parking lot's there on the right-hand side, um, so it's going to be a lot larger, so people will actually know where to park. Oh, good. Um, 
And then if you go to the next one, I just wanted to show people one of the things that we are going to be doing is putting a patio outside. Oh, uh -huh. And so that when people come from out of town or you come and you want to um, take a hike in the woods, we'll have uh, a nice patio where people can come out and maybe have a cocktail or they bring their kids for lunch and they have lunch there. Um, and it will be connected very closely to the catering kitchen, so we'll be able to do that. But um, the patio, we're hoping to have um, music in the evenings when we're open late mm -hmm. and um, provide a, a third place for the community to be. So that patio will be a really fun addition to um, the, the, uh, the, the barn. Right. Well, it's uh, underway. You already had the groundbreaking, right? Yes, we did. But, it, you know, it's not, you know, I might be the conductor here, but, you know, we have a board, we have um, members, we have community businesses, artists, children, families, um, folks like yourself that are rooting for us and supporting us. So I want to thank them because if it wasn't for them, I, you know, it's easy to conduct, but unless you have the support of the community, we really can't move forward. So I thank them and, and invite everyone to support uh, our efforts uh, in the future. At the Dairy Barn. Right. My guest today has been uh, Jane Forrest Redfern, who is the CEO at the Dairy Barn, and has been there now for how many years? Four years. Four yeah. years. But uh, you can tell that she's a go-getter, and she's going and getting more for the dairy barn. There we go. For and the uh, thank you for the community, Jane, for your leadership. It's really wonderful. Well, thank you, Lois, for being This here. is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday.